Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, and blessed are you, because Jesus is here with us and loves us each and every one and gives us peace in our hearts. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. in Jerusalem just like John Oh John, oh John what did you say walk in Jerusalem just like John that you'd be there on judgment day walk in Jerusalem just like John I want to be ready Just like John, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem. Just like John. Now sinners, mind how you step on the cross. Walk in Jerusalem just like John. Your foot might slip and your soul get lost. Walk in Jerusalem just like John. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. Walk in Jerusalem just like John. To walk in Jerusalem just like John. To walk in Jerusalem just like John.
to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. Studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, fathers, let's go down, down to the river to. the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. birthday of the church. Wow, that's a great response, yeah? <laughs> you know, birthing's an amazing event, and the mother experiences, I'm told, a great deal of pain and then some relief, which is usually followed by some overwhelming love and exhaustion at a birth. But, you know, what is it like for the child? Mercifully, I don't think most of us remember that event, which is perhaps why it's difficult for us to apprehend the power and amazing love of Pentecost, the birthday of the church. But we are able to remember sometimes our own spiritual birthing, the powerful love of the Holy Spirit in our own lives, awakening us to new life. See... See if this remembrance is awakened in you as you hear the story of the Pentecost fire. Okay, yep. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided, divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages 
as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own language. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're all filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoke, smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I forgot to tell you. Those of you who have never seen these before, little cards in front of you. If everybody fills out one, then we'll know who was here. We might even get messages from you. Some of them are good. We'll collect them during the end. Pentecost is the day the church started burning. Now, most of us are really worried about that. We have insurance. We're only allowed to burn a couple of candles, you know, that whole business. We don't want church buildings burning down, I guess. But the fire of the Holy Spirit is what enables the church to survive. If we were just here talking about dry doctrines and rules and so forth a long time ago, we wouldn't be here. But we're here today because the Spirit comes and lives with us and empowers us to live differently, to live with God's power in our lives. Now, when I was growing up in a congregational church, we never mentioned Pentecost. It was apparently too miraculous for for rational congregationalist people. And I expect in some Methodist churches that was probably the same thing. Fifty or sixty years ago, we, the amazing reality of the Holy Spirit was, well, you know, that might mess up the order of things, as the Holy Spirit tends to do. But John Wesley and the early Methodists found great joy in the movement of God's Spirit in their hearts. And in the early Methodist meetings, there were reports of healings and visions and prophecies and more, all due to the work of the Holy Spirit among believers old and new. Methodist preachers, black and white, went up and down the East Coast and into the New West, proclaiming this message of the presence of the Holy Spirit working in the world. And people noticed. Now what, friends, is your experience of the Holy Spirit? Have you experienced what you believe might just be the Spirit? Have you asked, even, for this blessing of the Holy Spirit in your life? Many Christians have been told to not even ask for this blessing. It might be too much. And there are times when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit can be a little freaky for those who are watching it. <clears throat> That's true. But the power of the Holy Spirit is what makes this business real. Without the Holy Spirit, our religion would be dry as dust. Doctrines without drive, ideas without inspiration, practices without a purpose, and rules without divine reality. For most people who have weak faith or none at all, the key is often that they've never encountered the Spirit of God. And why is that? Because they've never encountered Christians who are filled with the Spirit of God. You see, the church's job is to live with the Spirit so that others can experience God's loving presence in the world. Now, most every week, my sister, Susan, Reverend Suzanne, gets up and she preaches, she says a prayer in French. How many of you understand French? A little bit. Okay. Not too many. But what we know is that when she's preaching, she's praying, the power of the Holy Spirit is at work in her. We can feel the Spirit moving in her words and in her body. That's the power of the Spirit. Now, you don't have to be a reverend for that to happen, right? In fact, in many cases, it's a disadvantage, right? Because you go to cemetery, I mean seminary, and you learn how to be boring. Although, in my case, it came naturally. And those of us who aren't gifted musicians, well, that's, how, that's the way it is. But you know, when we hear Joshua play or, or Austin or the bell choir or the singers, 
or the band? Don't you just sometimes feel the power of God working? Hmm. The Holy Spirit moving through the music. <clears throat> Some of us go out to a mountaintop and we look and we gaze and we are in awe of the amazing nature of creation. And because we have some engineers in our midst, I'm pretty sure there are some of you who see this mathematical equation and you go like, wow, this is amazing. Right? You're in awe when you see this really cool equation. Now, that's not me. But I know it happens to some people. All of these things are building up awe within us. Now, awe is an important word. It's not what we say, oh, I don't know about that, but it's a different kind of awe. Mostly you read in the Bible where it says the fear of the Lord is good for you. And most of us go, right. But that word in Hebrew is better translated as awe. <clears throat> We're standing in awe of this amazing God. Now, I used to think going to heaven was really boring. I mean, who would want to just go up and play a liar on a cloud, you know? Joshua would do great, but I'm not sure that was for me. Until I start realizing I get to watch God do cool things 24-7 forever. Now that's awesome. That's truly awesome. Do we have any awe of God in our daily lives? Are we willing to let God be who God wants to be for us? Because that's what awe is. It's a posture that says God's going to be alive for you today. And I'm going to look and I'm going to see it. Ah, yes, but we're really good at hiding the awesomeness of God from ourselves and from other people. Now, how many of you have been here or been a child or had a child that says, that was boring? When you come to church, that was boring! And often the child is correct. <laughs> we can get really boring, can't we? But God is never boring when the Spirit is present and alive and working in us. The Spirit lead never leaves us untouched. The Spirit never goes through us and does not transform and change us a little bit, if we, at least even to nudge us and make us feel a little uncomfortable with how silly we've been before. The Spirit opens the door. And you know, a spiritless church is like a pile of dry bones. You remember the teaching in Ezekiel. The Lord took Ezekiel out to a valley filled with dry bones. And he said, this is the house of my people, right? And Ezekiel said, yeah, it looks that way. And the Lord told them to speak to the bones. And they came alive and they were filled with spirit and they can move. And he said, now I can do that with dry bones. I can do that with my people. So go and tell them. Show them that the Spirit is alive and well. And when we do this, we are drawn together in the Spirit. We get to experience one another as common sisters and brothers in the Spirit. We get to appreciate our differences, not as a problem, <clears throat> but as a great gift from God. Now, that goes even for the person you don't like. That's a hard one. But just imagine the people you don't even know very well, and you look at them and you go, I don't know that person. God's got something going in her or in him that's changing the world. And if we pay attention, we learn, and we experience God moving in us, and we experience that there is hope in the midst of even the worst situations. Of course, we're good at losing the awe of the Spirit. Can tend to become a little brittle, a little hard. We fall into disputes and have bad feelings. Little problems become big issues. Without the Spirit, we tend to get in fights over trivial things. We take offense at the slightest. We get worked up over differences that should be celebrated. But the Spirit of God is what animates us for real. 
It gives us life and joy and love. The Spirit is what enables us to do what we cannot do without it. The Spirit allows us to understand and love one another. The Spirit enriches our experiences of other people. The experience is the experience of the Spirit gives us to understand that even our language is never enough. That hearing another person speak in our, in English or in any other language somehow enriches us and gives us a bigger picture of the awesomeness of God in the world. <clears throat> so friends, if you'd like to be transformed, oh, I saw a pretty good cartoon this week. Preacher standing up there and says, how many of you are in favor of change? And all the hands went up. And then he said, how many of you are willing to change? God's been having that problem for a long time with us. But the Holy Spirit's here to enable us to do that change, to carry us through the rough time to enable us to do what we cannot do otherwise, to be people that we didn't know we could be. But God has already and always known that we were there. So if you don't feel strong today, if you feel depressed, if you feel like you're not good enough, if you feel like you've been put down just too many times, if you feel like life is too tough, if you feel like things just aren't ever going to be better, then you just need to let the Holy Spirit touch you and give you the strength to wake up into a new reality, a reality in which you can make it through. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying you don't need to take meds. I take mine every day. But I am saying that God can do great things with us when we allow this to happen. And I pray that this church will come into fire. There'll be little flames of fire over every head. That every tongue will have little bits of fire coming out, not in anger and hate, but in love and in joy and in singing. Praise be to the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Père. Éternel Dieu, nous te sommes très reconnaissants. Nous t'adorons, nous te glorifions pour ce moment, puisque aujourd'hui c'est une grande journée. Nous disons merci pour la Pentecôte, car tu as dit, je ne vous laisserai jamais orphelin. Vous aurez le Saint-Esprit qui sera au milieu de vous, esprit de vérité, esprit de paix, esprit d'amour. L'Esprit qui nous conduit à la vie éternelle, ô oh, Seigneur, répare ton Esprit au milieu de nous. Souffle l'Esprit de Dieu, souffle l'Esprit de Dieu, touche nos cœurs, ô oh, Seigneur. Nous te disons merci puisque tu es au milieu de nous. Que ton Esprit Saint nous conduise. Ô oh Seigneur, nous remettons toutes les familles à traiter cette main. Nous recommandons ceux qui sont dans les hôpitaux. Nous recommandons ceux qui sont dans les prisons. Ô oh Seigneur, que tu, ton Esprit Saint les délibère. Que ton Esprit Saint les guérit. Ô oh, bénis-nous. Bénis ton Église. Que ton Esprit souffle au milieu de nous et nous conduit dans la vérité dans la vie éternelle. Nous prions au nom de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Amen.
One of the things the Lord has given us through the power of the Holy Spirit is the joy of being able to be forgiven, to be set free from our past, from those things that we have done we wish we didn't, the things we didn't do that we wish we had. Yes, the facts are the facts, but the, the feeling of guilt and shame can be taken away. And so let's lift up all of those things in the name of Jesus now, trusting in the divine forgiveness. My friends, know that you are loved by Jesus. You are loved in your inmost being, and you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. So when we come forward, first of all, this table is open to everybody. Jesus wants to reach out to every single person in love. And so wherever you stand in your own heart and mind, if you want to be at peace with God and with others, come forward and meet the Lord. Uh, we won't be able to kneel for the service of communion. So you will come and you will be served standing. You may return to your seats or if you wish to go and kneel at the rail, at that time you may do so. Always and everywhere to give a fancy to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of love. When we turned away, when our love failed, when our love, our love, our love your love remains steadfast. Your spirit came upon the prophets and teachers, anointing them. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we lift up and praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and mighty, heaven and earth are full of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and but declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you will stay in your control. He healed the sick and fed the hungry. He ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivering us from slavery to sin and death, and making with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. When Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us in the Holy Spirit with fire, as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave the thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take it, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in your remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave the thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, this is my blood, of the new covenant pour out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now on the day he raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup. So in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for 
us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on with gift of bread and wine. Make them before the body and the blood of Christ, that we may before the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by his gift of the Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ come in final victory and we first at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given to the new body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ given for the forgiveness of sin and new life. Amen.
Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the ministry in which you give yourself to us. Let the Lord of the world thank us to give our service for all of us. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Lord, surround your people with your spirit. Fill our hearts, our lungs, our minds with your very presence. Through the power of the Spirit, send us forth into the world to bear witness to your love. And grant us the peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah.